Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at quartiles and percentiles so we can answer questions from exercise 2c. Now quartiles, uh, you may have seen these before, they were used in box and whisker diagram and cumulative frequency diagrams. Percentiles might be new to you but you're, they're exactly the same thing as quartiles really. So what we have to do to work out the median for a set of data is first of all we have to order our data points um, from smallest to largest and then the halfway point or the halfway piece of data that's your median and your quarter way point or your quarter way piece of data and your three quarter way piece of data is where the Q1 is or the lower quartile and the upper quartile is for the three quarter way marker <clears throat> and in between each of these um, lower quartile, median and upper quartile contains 25% of the data. And percentiles work in roughly the same way, so the 10th percentile, for example, will have 10% um, of the data below that marker, and the 90 percentile will have 90% of the data below that marker. Okay. So that's how we, that's what quartiles and percentiles are. How do we work them out now? Well, we've got two different methods that we use for different discrete and continuous data. For the lower quartile, what we do is we take n and divide it by 4. You'd, you'd expect that. Um, but what we have to do after that, if we've got discrete data, is we have to, if it's a whole value that we get after that, and the lower quartile is in between that value and the value above. And if it's not a whole number, then we round up and we take that data point. So, for example, if we were to have uh, four people, you would think that the first thing you would have to do is divide by four to find the lower quartile. That would be the first person. But in fact, what you should be doing is going between the first person and the second person in this gap here and that is where the lower quartile is going to be so that's what it refers to um, here if if whole like it would be here n 4 divided by 1 so 4 divided by 4 is 1 so it's not the first person that we're going to look at for the lower quartile it's in between 1 and the 1 above it so it's in between 1 and 2 for this point here. And all the rest of these examples work in a similar way. So if it's not whole, say if we had the number 5, you would do, um, you'd find 5 divided by 4, which is 1.25, then you would round up to 2, even though it doesn't round uh, properly, it would round down to 1 usually, you'd round it up to 1 point, what, to 2, and then you would take that data point. For the upper quartile, it works in a very similar way. So you do 3n divided by 4. And if it's whole, you take that number and the number above it and find the in-between marker there. So very similar here. If we had third person here and fourth person here, 3 quarters of 4 is 3. So you wouldn't go to 3. You'd go in between 3 and 4, the third data point and the fourth data point. <coughs> And if it's not whole, say 5, you would do um, 15 divided by 4, which is 3.75, and then you would round up and you would take that data point, so it would be the fourth data point that you would use there. When it's continuous data, it's a bit simpler because we, we're happier that it um, goes within a range of values, um, and it has been rounded initially as well. So divide n by 4 <coughs> and just take that data point. And then with the upper quartile, just do 3n divided by 4 and take that data point as well. Right then, so let's have a look at some questions here. So here we're going to be working with um, discrete data, and luckily for us it's already been put in order. So this data comes from the large data set and the daily maximum gust in knots during the first 20 days of June 2015, um, recorded in Hearn. So the data is shown below, and what we're asked to do is find the median and the quartiles for this data. So to find the median, that's just n plus 1 divided by 2, and take that data point. So if we've got 20 data points, it's 20 plus 1 divided by 2, and it's 10.5. If this was continuous data, we'd just half it. So it's the 10.5th data set, so counting the 10th value here and the 11th value here, and halfway between 22 and 23, 
is 22.5. For the lower quartile, what we need to do there, because it's discrete, is we'll do n divided by 4, which is 5, so it's going to be in between the 5th and 6th data point, so in between 18 and 18, so our data point there is going to be 18. For Q3, it's in a very similar way, do 3n divided by 4, which gives you 15, and then it's in between 15 and 16, so that's going to be in between 25 and 26, so that's going to be 25.5. Okay, so for the median, it's n plus 1 divided by 2, and take that data point, for discrete uh, lower quartile, it's n divided by 4, and then follow the two rules. And for upper quartile, it's 3n divided by 4, and then follow those rules again. OK, let's now have a look at what we need to do for continuous data here. So this is the method of linear interpolation, quite a difficult method if you haven't had much practice at it, so pay attention here. Right, so what we've got here is the length in time spent on the internet by a group of students each evening. And it says here 31 to 30, 30 to 31, but really what this is um, saying here is it's 29.5 minutes to 31.5 minutes. Because you can see there's a, there's a gap in the data points here. So we have to treat this as 32 to 33.5 here. OK, and the question here is, um, find an estimate for the upper quartile. OK, so given that we've got continuous data here, we're just going to do 3n divided by 4, and it's going to be the 52.5th value. So what we're going to want to do is go through our data points and estimate, first of all, which group the 52nd point fifth data point is in, and then probably how far into that data we're going to go. So what we have to do here is use a method of linear interpolation. So what we're going to do first is find out that it's in group 34 to 36, but how far into that group is it? Well, to do this, we're going to use the formula of this one here, and it's lower bound plus the place in the group. So it's going to be the um, 52nd point fifth value, but it's 27 values already, so 52 0.5 divided, so take away 27 is going to be the 25th.5th data point into that set. Okay, so 22.5 out of a group frequency of 30, and then we times by the um, times by the class width. Okay, so it's group frequency and class width that you need for this formula here. It's effectively what fraction of the group do we need to go into the class with a width of a um, of certain value and add that onto the lower bound of the group that we're currently working in? So let's go through this then. So it's the 52.5th value. So it's going to therefore be the 25.5th place into the group. Um, and we know it has 30 values in that group. OK, and also remember that 34 is not going to be the lower bound, but it's going to be 33.5 um, for this value here. So the class width here is really, if you imagine this from 33.5 up to 36.5, then that's really a class width of 3. That's why we've got a 3 value here. So we're going to go 25.5 positions into the group of 30 values um, with a class width of 3 and then we're going to add that onto the lower boundary which is 33.5 <clears throat> and calculate the value for this and we get 36.05 so that's our pretty accurate um, prediction for what the upper quartile is going to be OK, then let's have a look at part B then, so the 10th percentile. So first off, what we do is we find which group the 10th percentile is going to be in. So 10% of 70 is the 7th value. And then we use our formula, so we know it's in the group between 31.5 and 33.5. And it's going to be 5 into this group, because we've already had two of these data points appear before 
So it's going to be fifth value into this group. So the place that it's in the group is five. Out of 25 data points, it's got a width of two from 31.5 up to 33.5, and its lower boundary is 31.5. Calculate this, and we get P10, is what we call it, the 10th percentile, is 31.9. OK, so we're going to have to have lots of practice at this linear interpolation type question. Um, make sure you have lots of practice at it from the exercises. OK, then, so what we'll do is have a go at this question here, then pause the video and try it out. Right, OK, then, well done for having a go at this question here, then. Let's have a go together. So what we're going to do for part A is find the median of the weights. Now if we have 31 Jersey cows, it's 31 divided by 2, so it's going to be the 15.5th data point here. So what we have to do first is find which group this uh, data point is in. Now we've got 3 up to here, we've got 9 up to here, we've got 19 up until this point here. So I know it's going to be in the group from 400 to 449. So now I'm going to apply my formula here. So it's lower bound plus place in the group over group frequency times class width. So what's the lower boundary of this group? Well, that's going to be 399.5. Add the place that it's going to be in this group. Now, if it's the 15.5th of value in this uh in this total data, and we've already had nine pieces of data, then it's going to be the 6.5th piece of data into this group. Out of 10 pieces of data in that group, times by how wide that group interval is, now it's going to be 399.5 up to 449.5. So that's, how we're going to, that's going to have a class width of 50. And then get your calculator out, so it's going to be 6.5 divided by 10 times by 50, and then add on 399.5, and we get 432. Okay. So we'll have to do a roughly similar thing for part B, just working with the quartiles. So this one's going to be 31 divided by 4, which is 31 divided by 4. That is 7.75. So that's going to be in the second group. So applying the formula here, this is going to be um, the lower boundary of this group here is 349.5. Add the place that it's going to be in this group. Now, if we've already had three, then we're going to have the 4.75th value in this group. Divide by how many pieces of data in that group? That's six. And then add that onto the class width here. Well, it's going to be 349.5 up to 399.5. So that's going to be a class width of 50. And then calculate this value here. So it's 4.75 divided by six times by 50, and then add that onto 349.5, and we get 389, sorry, uh, rounded to the nearest value. And for the upper quartile, we're going to do 3 times 31 over 4. So 3 times 31 divided by 4, and we get the 23rd point two fifth value. So which group is this going to be? And well, we'll have 26 data points up to here, so it's going to be in this group here. So it's going to be 449.5, which is the lower boundary of this group here. And then it's going to be add on to how many data points we're going to go into this group. Well, if we've already had 19 data points up until uh, here, then it's going to be 23.5 take away 19, which is going to be 4.25. Divided by how many pieces of data in this group, which is 7, times by the class width, which is probably going to be 50 again. And the answer that we get here is 4.25 divided by 7 times by 50, and add that onto 449.5, and we get... Uh, 480 rounded to the nearest value. Now these are all in 
kilograms. Let's make sure we've got the units on there. Okay, great. So part C is interpret the meaning of the value we've found for the upper quartile in part B. The interpretation here would be that three quarters of the cows weigh under 40, 480 kilograms, or effectively 25% of the cows weigh over 480 kilograms. Okay, so that's how you do linear interpolation. Make sure you have lots of practice at it. Make sure you have lots of practice with the discrete data as well. We have to follow those certain rules and uh, ask your teacher for help if you need any help with these questions here. So go ahead and answer questions from exercise 2C then. Thanks very much for watching this video.